Welcome back to the Serving Board series. If you watched the last video, you would see that we tortured these poor three boards by throwing them into the dishwasher. Feel free to go back and watch the last video if you'd like, but we're doing all the silly, outrageous, crazy things to these boards so that if a customer does that, we know how to handle it and solve their problem for them. Okay, so we know how to fix boards. You know, not too hard to do. Onesie twosies, not a problem. Now what we wanna do is we wanna figure out what happens and what the heck we do when we get 200 emails in our inbox of people who have all stuck their board in the dishwasher. All of a sudden it's not so simple as doing it in our own kitchen one or two at a time. So how do we handle all that? How do we boil all that down into one process of fixing everybody's boards and bringing them all back up to the same quality. Before we go running off a cliff with concept and big picture and how we think we might wanna do this, let's just step back for a minute and fix some of the boards and see how that goes and see if we learn anything from simply sitting down and fixing the boards that we previously ruined. Based on our past experiments with these boards, we've learned that there's essentially two main fixes for when a board goes through a rough experience, be that the dishwasher or anything else, and that's either refinishing them straight away, so just directly putting more finish on them, or lightly sanding them and then putting finish on them. Those are the two things we have to at least offer to our customers. So let's tackle the most difficult problem first, because that's how we handle life, right? You're such a goof. <laughs> I was waiting for that one. So let's say a customer calls and the board is completely trashed. Salvageable, but trashed. So what do we do? To the whiteboard. So step one, we find out that the board is trashed. Step two, how do they now get it from their kitchen to our workshop? Step three, what do we do with it once it gets to our workshop? And step four, how do we get it back from our workshop to their kitchen? So step one's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, they're just gonna call us and say, hey, my cutting board is no longer in good shape. It's actually in pretty bad shape. Step two, we'll say, hey, we do have a cutting board refinishing service. And if they say, yes, I would like to utilize that, and they, buy that service from us, we will mail them a pre-addressed, pre-prepared package that they can send the board back to us in. Just like a lot of companies do. They'll send you something that you can send back to them. They'll do this for like laptops or nicer pieces of equipment so that it safely gets from the customer back to you. And then step three, how we finish it is we get it back. We do some light sanding just to get it all nice and smooth again. And then we're gonna refinish it. And then basically we send it right on back to them. So what do we charge for something like this? Probably like $45, $50 and shipping is included both ways. So with our business model, a lot of these boards are gonna end up being gifted. So the people receiving them really don't have any money tied up in them at all. They spent nothing, they just received them. So $50 is gonna be pretty easy for them to swallow and, and understand that they're getting you know good service for their money. Especially because they're taking a high quality product back to its original state. 
All right, so that procedure is gonna take care of the extreme, like worst case scenario problems. But 90% of the time, they're just gonna need more finish. They want a new coat, um, the board dries out, they washed it with too much soap. Just general maintenance for the board, they just need a new coat of finish. Well, we wanna be able to offer that to our customers, but we don't need to do that as a business because it's gonna bog us down. If all we're doing is shipping boards back and forth and reapplying finish, it's really gonna cut into our time building other projects. So that's something that we're gonna push off to the customers. Now, how do you get customers to do work without thinking it's work? Well, you can make it an experience and that's what we plan to do with these refinishing kits. So I can't really explain the experience to you on camera, it's just not gonna be the same. So Jenny and I are gonna make a couple packages real quick and we'll show you what we're talking about with the package. All right, so the first thing the customer is gonna see in the mail is this nice black package. And that's gonna have stickers and stuff on it with our brand, but we don't have those yet. But they're gonna get the package and they're gonna open it. And the first thing that they're gonna see after they open the package is inside is a little pamphlet showcasing all of the furniture that we make. These are our big kitchen tables, everything. Of course, they've just got our cutting board, but it's gonna advertise a bunch of stuff. 50-50 shot that they throw it away, but it's worth the printing cost to just maybe try to get a sale out of it. But then they're gonna reach in the bag and they're gonna pull out the finishing kit, which is what they're gonna order from our website. And straight away what they're gonna see is a little care card tied to the top and that's gonna direct them to our website where we have clear written instructions as well as a video that shows them how to refinish their board with this little kit. So they're gonna undo the string, take the little card off, and then they're gonna look inside and find the little tin of finish, which you just saw us pour. Now, on the tin of finish is gonna be another one of those branding stickers. Again, we don't have them yet, but it's really gonna to add to the whole experience of the finishing kit. So inside there is our preferred three to one finish of just mineral oil and beeswax. Um, we call it a special blend on the tag, but that's really all it is and to a non-woodworker, it is a special blend. Inside, you're also gonna find a little special applicator pad, and all that is is a cut up piece of Mr. Clean Magic Eraser you know, thing you know, used to scrub the, the doorways and stuff in the kitchen. It's got a very light abrasive in it, which is gonna do two things. Number one, it's gonna soak up the finish like a sponge and apply it, as well as sand the board a little bit just to make it even smoother. And you see this in industry all the time. People take something that's designed for one purpose and put it in a different category and it becomes its own product. So this whole finishing kit is gonna have a really premium feel to it. Um, everything is gonna be custom, it's gonna be an experience to use, and we're gonna have very detailed instructions on how to use it. So the whole idea is that the whole complete package is like 20 bucks. We're not making too much of a profit on it, but it's just gonna showcase what type of business we are. All right, so the whole idea behind these finishing kits is that it's supposed to be a really premium product. Mm -hmm. When you get to this tier of, of luxury products, you sort of expect a premium experience whenever you order a follow-on product. Think of anything you buy from Apple. The whole unboxing experience has premium packaging. Yes. Like, what are they charging now? Like, they just have wheels that go under their tower computer for like $700. Yes, or even something as simple as just the, the iPhone. You go out and buy your own case. So the whole point, is to get the customer excited about the whole experience. And the idea is with the pamphlet in there showcasing our other furniture, if we put this much time, effort, energy into the experience of refinishing a board for $20 with a little kit, how much better quality do you think our kitchen tables are gonna be? We wanna set the tone for what kind of business we are and what kind of uh, operations, I guess, we do. 
because most of these boards are going to be gifted. So they're not going to have any idea how much the board costs because it was a gift. So they're going to get online and they're going to buy the $20 refinishing kit and see just how high quality it is with the whole experience. And then hopefully they'll look at that pamphlet and want to order a nice kitchen table mm -hmm. from us. That's where we're really going to make the money. So that's kind of our thought process going on here. And this is something that's easy for us to produce, assemble, and ship out whenever we get an online order. Yes. We'll get the bags ready to go. We'll get prepaid postage labels. We'll just send them out in the mail the, the next day. The envelopes, the stickers, it'll be fast and easy. And then for the people that do want to mail their board back to us, we'll just sand it, refinish it, and send it right back to them. So both ways we have everything covered so mm -hmm. this has been a really fun experience just kind of thinking like a big business and how we're mm -hmm. going to handle all these products so in the next video we are going to tackle the packaging for the boards themselves when someone buys the board and they want to gift yep. it to somebody else we want to have it as a perfect gift package ready to go premium feel just like these finishing kits that way it just sets the tone for who we are as a business yes. and communicating that business identity to the customer in something as simple as a cardboard box so subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the videos that we have going on we're trying to start a furniture business in the houston area and uh yeah follow along as we try to put in practice some of the things that we're learning talk to you later see you on the next one <laughs>